How often do you get that to happen on your podcast? Yeah. <laughs> It's, uh, you know, I've, I've been really lucky over the years to be able to travel all over the world, you know, yeah. and uh, Italy is my favorite. Yeah. I'm like all Italian. I mean, I got into fashion. That's why I'm all dressed up like this, because I don't have anything else to wear. Yeah, nice. And, and uh, but I'm really into Italian, like the, the way the men in Italy dress. They have a flair and elegance. Yeah. And. And then, uh, and then over the years, I had so many people tell me uh, that they went to Italy and they loved it. No, I mean, I never got one person that ever told me they didn't love yeah. it. Yeah. And I, I thought, man, one of these days, and two years ago for my birthday, I did a solo trip to Italy for about five days. Oh, man. Are you flexing about how many places you've been? Yeah. Okay. But especially Italy. That's yeah. Charlie, by the way, that you're hearing on the other okay. end. Hey, Johnny. How you doing, Johnny? This is Charlie. Charlie, this is Johnny. You guys have something in common that you guys are in film. Yeah, I make some short films and stuff, and I heard you make some films as well. That's right. That's right. Anyway, so uh, Italy, man, the people they live life gregariously and with passion. Yeah the uh, the the best place I've been to that I could describe that way would be Rio de Janeiro. I've been to Brazil. Oh, yeah, I've never been there. I haven't been there. I've been there, and uh, I, I used to work for Fox Sports and the UFC, and I would travel a bunch doing that stuff. So, I did notice, sir. I thought I saw that you were you were in Hollywood for ten years. Uh, Eleven, go almost almost twelve. Yeah. And were you? Uh, where were you born? In Ohio. I was born, I was born in Ohio. Young, young okay, so you're back home now. You're back yes, to your roots. Yeah, you were in L.A. for what? What? took you out to LA was it the the work that you ended up being in yeah it was um you know I I'd always knew that I wanted to pursue filmmaking and I went to a film school in Orlando Florida first that was my first stop um called Full Sail and graduated from there and then moved straight out to California and just started working my way up where'd you live in California in California I, I was mostly in the valley it was, uh, I wish I could have afforded, you know, Santa Monica or something, but, uh, yeah. you know, we made it, we made it work. So it's like Sherman Oaks and then, uh, Valley village, that area. Okay. So you go to school to, to get some background in this, if I got you right. And then you move out to LA, how in the world do you, I mean, every, a lot of industries are competitive. Uh, yeah. I, I've been around Hollywood with some people that I work with and I know how that sort of works, but how did you break into all that and how did you work your way up? Uh, you know, it was, it was interesting. When you first get out to Hollywood, uh, you quickly learn that it's all who, you know, and if you don't know anybody like I did, uh, you know, you start at the bottom and you, you just try to get on set any, any place you can. And that meant, um, signing up, with central casting as a, as an extra, uh, getting on TV shows. And, you know, I'm, I'm my elbow is on the West wing. You know, I can say that. Um, <laughs> did any, did, uh, did any of the people you went to college with end up, um, being around there as well? Or was did yeah. that not? Yeah. 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 We, uh, I graduated from a, a film school in Florida and a few of us moved out at the same time. We all made the cross country trek. And that made things a little easier, you know, sleeping on a couch, um, a one bedroom apartment with three people, you know, yeah. make, makes it a little easier when you're starting out. Um, and, and everybody kind of worked their own way onto set and, and started working their way in the industry. And, you know, a few of those guys are still out there right now um, working on big movie sets and doing doing a lot of uh, interesting stuff. But uh, yeah, we had a good time. And, you know, when you're young and you're passionate, it really takes you very far um i think just being passionate you know but being young probably helps too. oh yeah being uh, yeah. older like that. young yeah what, what were you doing were you were you trying to be a director or was it yeah, something so else? i i had always wanted to write and direct um i think you know a lot of people that go to film school that's kind of what they say um 
and I, I just had a passion for it. So I started writing when I first got to California. Um, I was fortunate enough that uh, I was able to have a few screenplays um, sell or option, as they call it, uh, where, where a producer would pay me for it. And every time that happened, I thought, this is it. My, my film career is about to begin. Yeah. And I, I learned the hard way that just because somebody pays you for a script does not mean that they will ever get that movie made. Um, so that happened a few times. Um, you know, I, I, I didn't tell the complete truth. When I said I moved to California and I didn't know anybody, that's not technically true. I knew through connections uh, in my hometown, one of our one of our favorite heroes, a former boxing champion named Ray Boom Boom Mancini. Oh, you and I know uh, same guy. Yeah. Yeah. Ray, he, uh, you know, he's a legend in Youngstown. Right? Yeah. So well, as soon as I got out to California, it was uh, somebody that lived up the street from my mother said, hey, what's Johnny doing? Is he out? You know, he's out there trying to make movies. Ray's making movies. He should call Ray. And they gave my, my mother Ray's phone number. And, uh, and I called him and he said, come on down to Santa Monica, you know, come to there's a nice Italian restaurant down there. And uh, we would go eat lunch and, and it became a recurring thing. And I told him, I said, look, I'll do whatever, you know, I'll be an, an intern, an assistant, whatever you need yeah. uh, to try to help him get his, his films going. And um, I eventually pitched him an idea for a documentary about our hometown. Uh, Youngstown, Ohio is a town which um, you've, e you've either heard about it or you've never heard of it. It's got a bad reputation or you've never heard of it. And so uh, we wanted to kind of set the story straight on our hometown and he liked the idea. And we ended up making a, a documentary movie about Youngstown called Youngstown Still Standing, which that was my first movie I ever did. Um, 2010 that was a feature documentary that's currently on amazon prime right now so you can check that out it's yeah. about it's about the the history of youngstown the, the steel mills the sports stars and the italian mafia which a lot of people have no idea is, is that the part that you're talking about it has kind of a bad reputation yeah. because of the mafia yeah, yeah it was i didn't a, know that yeah and a lot of people don't you know they, they think um you know, Ohio is like a flyover state, right? Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, it, it, most people who've never been here don't real. they, they always think cornfields and, you know, it, it, they always confuse Iowa with Ohio. And, uh, and, and we're really right where Youngstown, Ohio is where I'm at is exactly half the distance between uh, Cleveland and Pittsburgh, which both had, um, a La Cosa Nostra family and uh, Youngstown was a big um, immigrant town. Um, a lot of, a lot of different ethnicities. People came here to work in the steel mills Yeah, and everybody gambled. Everybody's grandparents gambled and, you know, it wasn't really a vice here in Youngstown. So the, uh, the, the, the mob kind of thrived for the whole, you know, 20th century yeah. And uh, it was called Crime Town and Bomb Town and, and Murder Town. And it had a pretty negative reputation as far as um, the crime element went. Yeah. But it was all, uh, you know, it was all organized crime, which was, you know, I, I've learned after after I moved away kind of how unique that was. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I went to film school and and people would always say whenever their favorite movies would come up, The Godfather or Goodfellas or things like that. And I would say, Oh, great. Have you ever heard of Youngstown? And no one ever had. And so yeah. I said, okay, that'd be a great idea for a movie to, to, to show the history there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so you could check out that documentary. It's on it's called Youngstown still standing on Amazon prime. Is that, is there still an element of uh, organized crime there? That's kind of under the radar or, you know, honestly, no. And that, no. and it, and it, and it ended in my lifetime. It. um, it ended in the 1990s. Wow. Um, we had our, our district, or our, we don't have district attorneys here. We have county prosecutors. It's the same equivalent. Our county prosecutor had just won an election in 1996. This guy, he did not take money from the mob. That was his whole thing. Well, they didn't like that. So they put a hit on him on Christmas Eve 
1996. I was 11 years old and, uh, and they botched it. He survived. He took a bullet, you know, through, through the, the arm and the, and the ribs and survived. And eventually that the investigation kind of led to the, uh, the downfall of the entire mob that was left. And I should, I should, I should specify by the 1990s, the mob, had decimated itself they went to war these cleveland family and the pittsburgh family went to war over youngstown and uh by the time the 1990s came around they had kind of wiped each other out so the they the, did all the work for you for yeah the so the only ones that were left uh you know the bosses when they wanted to do something like whack the county prosecutor they had to hire street level thugs and not really not really the the made men anymore yeah and they botched the hit and their own incompetence kind of led to their downfall and the fbi came in they arrested over 110 city officials prosecuted them Man. uh mayors uh priests in the all of them and the, the whole town was full of corruption and eventually they got our congressman um jim traffickant who was a who was a crazy character uh you know just a, an American icon, a, a crazy character. You know, his story alone is, is insane. But that was all, eventually he went to prison in 2002. That was the end of it. So uh, they finally got everybody in my lifetime. And, you know, I graduated I graduated high school in 2003. So I took all that Good knowledge yeah. and, uh, and, and took it to Hollywood. So, so is it a pretty safe city now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's it's got a lot of... Uh, still some unemployment you know it, it's a it's a it's a town that never really recovered from the loss of the steel industry yeah so it didn't have a big uh, um you know employer to to come in and so there's still a lot of kind of poverty around um it's interesting it's got you know your suburbs and your and your the the downtowns res, you know having a resurgence but um there is there is kind of you know some some uh like everywhere I mean, yeah, exactly. You know, every, every, every town's got its problems and, and uh, yeah, it's been interesting this, this year in particular, it's a little bit, a little bit, the numbers are a little higher for the violence this year, but uh, that, think, that's across the board. I think the growing part of that has to do with that. So. Seems like a spark for course the way 2020 has been, you know, so far. Yeah. Uh, I'm curious to know that uh, it would seem to me that staying in Hollywood would give you the, or in that area would give you the maybe the best shot as far as getting it getting uh who's that guy this is this That's is a big nail the hammer yes I got got hammer. Oh, he's giovanni and leon so, hey guys hey, hey guys talk? okay <laughs> i need you to take him upstairs okay okay i need you to take him upstairs is that okay thank you take him upstairs say bye bye Thank you, brother. Go ahead. Bye-bye. Take his hand, Joe. Okay. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, I would think that, uh, you know, being around your the film industry, and especially in Hollywood, would give you the best chance of, uh, you know, climbing up the scale in the, now that what you're doing the, the filming. When you're doing your filming, obviously, you're writing it, you're directing it, and all that, right? From From start to finish, that's you, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I'm uh it, oh, one second, I'm sorry. Okay. I'll get I'll get him out of the room. How often do you get that to happen on your podcast? Yeah. Yeah. They want to see dad. I see know. What he's doing. Anyway, so um, you're doing it from start to finish. Yes, sir. So what made you want to leave the, you know, to being around <laughs> all that, to going back to Ohio? Those guys right there. That was, that was my chief motivation for, uh, for moving back to Ohio. Uh, my wife is from Florida. So she went from Florida to California. She, we, we met in Florida and she ended up graduating from University of Central Florida 
uh, after I had already moved myself to California. Okay. So she eventually followed and came out and, uh, you know, we ended up getting married and eventually having children. And, you know, Los Angeles is not a, it's a great place when you're single, yeah. and you're in your twenties, but when you're in your thirties and you're starting to have children, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty expensive. So I did that. I did the same thing with my kids. You know, I mean, I, uh, I met the, my first wife I met in LA but I already knew from being down there, just what you said. I said, you know, this is not a place I want to raise my kids, especially yeah. when they're small. I mean, that was, I think, more um, motivation to me than even the expense of it. And, you know, as, as we know, it's expensive down there. But I was born and raised on a dairy, different yeah. lifestyle. And to have my kids in the city, uh, it was just too foreign for me. I just, you know, so I moved out of the area. So, so that's yeah. why you moved in all, back to Ohio. Yeah, where where were you born? Uh, have you heard of Visalia? I, I've heard of it. Uh, Fresno. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, yes. forty minutes south of Fresno. Okay. And uh, we live in more of a uh, agricultural dairy. Yeah. Uh, community, and you know I don't know how. Angeles, that's for sure. Yeah, so it's a whole different. You know, back in those days, it was just so much different. Going to L.A. for the first time for me was a big shock. Yeah. You know, and I'm sure that's kind of how you felt a little bit too with having children and all that. So you moved back to Ohio. So and you know, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of give you the condensed version of the story. Um, we didn't have any family there in, in California. So we knew we wanted to go somewhere where we had family, either Jacksonville, Florida, where my wife is from, or Youngstown, Ohio, where I'm from. And somehow I kind of, I, I convinced my wife to give Ohio a shot, you know, these winters and never seen snow really so uh was able to convince her to go to ohio uh the next day after we made this decision we said okay in three months we'll move we'll move to ohio and uh and, and my logic was this was about 2016 i told myself you know i can make a movie anywhere now with technology the way yeah, it works yeah. cameras as good as they are um you know a low budget movie you could kind of make anywhere as long as you have passion so it, i told myself it didn't matter where i moved i was going to make a movie um a scripted film and we decided on ohio uh the very next day i went back to work i was working for fox sports um and on the fox movie studio lot and uh and i'm walking across the lot with a friend and i'm telling him that hey we just decided we're leaving we're gonna move to ohio and he says for what I said, well, we're going to make a movie. I'm going to make a movie. And he goes, you're on a movie studio lot. And you're telling me you're going to go to Ohio and make a movie. And I said, I know it sounds kind of crazy. Uh, but as I'm telling him this, and he's not really believing me, I see behind him about 120 yards, a guy getting into his car. And I recognized him as uh, he was my favorite filmmaker of all time, a guy named Sam Raimi. Um you know, you kind of have to be a diehard film guy to, to recognize him. He's not like a Martin Scorsese or, you know, very recognizable guy. But I, you know, I, I, I recognize him. And I think I told my friend, you know, that's I paused him and I said, hey, that's Sam Raimi. And uh, and I believe he heard me because it's the only thing that explains what happened next. Um, I'm, I'm standing there. He gets in his car. He goes to back up and drive past me. And he stops his car and waves me over. And I, and I come over to him and he says, hi, I'm, I'm Sam Raimi, shakes my hand. And uh, I said, oh, this is unbelievable. I start rambling basically. Um, Mr. Raimi, you're my favorite filmmaker. You inspired me to pick up a camera. I'm going to Ohio, I'm gonna make a movie. I just started telling him all this stuff. He says, let me park my car. He gets out, we had a 45 minute conversation um, full of advice. He gave me tons of advice. Um, I, I kind of knew his whole backstory. I thought I did my research. I knew, I knew a lot about him and he was from Michigan and he had got a group of dentists to invest in an independent film. And that's how his career started. Okay. Um, and, but he goes, what part of Ohio are you going to? And I said, Youngstown. And he goes, uh, I know Youngstown. He said, my brother was an emergency room doctor in Youngstown, Ohio for years. 
and he would go and sleep on his couch, his brother's couch, and write screenplays. And uh, I guess while he was here, he wrote two of his movies, um, one called Army of Darkness, another called uh, Dark Man with Liam Neeson. And he made those movies and, you know, they became big hits for him. And he ended up going on to direct the Spider-Man movies and uh, oh, he, did a, he did a Wizard of Oz sequel. He's done, uh, he's doing another Marvel movie right now. And he said he, he wrote those in Youngstown. And he, and, and he was naming all these kind of landmarks and uh, uh, things that, you know, really told me he knew his stuff. And afterwards he said, listen, I came to the Fox studio a lot to have a meeting today and it didn't go very well. He goes, but now I realize that I came here to meet you, oh, to tell wow. you to go to Youngstown <laughs> and make a movie. And, uh, and you, you had know, to. Yeah, that's amazing. Forced. I was forced to at that point. <laughs> yeah, you had uh, to. And I did. And, and you know, the, I, I happened to be writing a television show at the time called Fox Sports Live. And within like a week and a half, it got, this was two years into it, we got canceled. And they gave us a severance package, which I then used to move my family across the country. And, uh, and the rest is history. And we just started making a movie. And, and uh, That's a good story. You know, I, I want to ask you, because this happened with my wife and I, because when I came back from L.A., I decided to go. We were in the dairy industry for, uh, at that point, 50 years, you know, it was handed down. And I was supposed to be one of the generations that it, it goes to. So that's what I felt most comfortable with, because I really yeah. didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't I didn't graduate college, but I still didn't know what I wanted to do, you know. Yeah. And uh, uh so once I got into personal training and became, you know, did this for full time, my first wife freaked out because personal training, especially in those days, you know, it wasn't a stable job by any means. And I kind of, in a way, it reminds me of what you're doing. I mean, I would think that because Hollywood is fickle, as, as you know, and I know, how did your wife deal with that? I mean, you know, was it like, Hey, um, Johnny, we have to make money, steady money to have these kids and pay for everything. What are you going to do, Johnny? Well, uh, thankfully, you know, my wife was very supportive and understanding uh, those early days when we when, when we weren't, you know, making ends meet. Somehow we were just barely getting by. Um, Huge bless. Yeah, yeah. She... Uh, you, you know, once we started having kids, um, things were, were hitting a rhythm for me. I, I was selling screenplays. Um, I'd gotten hired by Fox Sports. I was producing, traveling, writing, directing, doing a lot, a lot of things and uh, making good living. And to the point where my wife was uh, a stay-at-home mom with, with my, my first uh, two kids. We, I have three sons, by the way. And... Uh, you know, so really she didn't, you know, my wife's always believed in me and, you know, that's a big part of my success, I think, is, is, uh, you know, having somebody in my corner like that and allowing me to, you know, chase the dream. And, and uh, once I, once we decided to move back to Ohio, uh, I kind of knew that, you know, I was going to have to make a living somehow, right? I mean, there's just not a lot of, a lot of jobs out here for filmmakers yeah. Uh, so, you know, I came back and I worked three jobs while I was making, uh, uh writing another movie. Um, I knew I wanted to make something, I had to make something small. I don't have a lot of money to make a movie. Um, so I started writing a teenage comedy because I thought to myself, you know, what's a cheap movie budget wise I can make. Teenage comedies are great because you only need teenagers and Teenagers alone have enough conflict and drama and, you know, yeah. you don't need car chases and, and things like that. So uh, I started writing this little comedy and I was working three jobs. I was, a, I was a delivery driver, a medical courier, and a bartender. Whatever it took. Yeah, what, exactly. And so it was just a matter of uh, perseverance. And, you know, and, and, and when I wasn't working one of those jobs... Um, I was coaching my kids wrestling or fundraising. 
yeah. constantly trying to, you know, keep it moving, keep it going. I mean, and, listen, uh, when you're, when you're doing something like that, I mean, I, I've listened to like Stallone, he mentioned uh, in one of his uh, uh, interviews that he did and how he got like turned down and rejected like so many times. I mean, it wasn't like you just can just write a, a, a movie and just be, yeah. Oh, they took it. I'm sure you dealt with a lot of rejection and, yeah, Is that right course. or not? Of course, of course. Um, and, you know, Sylvester Stallone's a huge inspiration for me uh, because of what you just said. I mean, at one point they offered him, you know, I think $100,000 for the, for the Rocky script. Yeah. Without, they said, we'll give you $100,000, but we don't want you. And, uh, and, and he was he, basically homeless at the time. Yeah. It's and so, mm-hmm. yeah, it was. I didn't he, know that. He had to sell his dog and, and there's a whole oh, story behind shit. it. But uh, yeah, so. I mean, shoot, sorry. That no, no, no your earmuffs. <laughs> no, he was a uh, just really uneducated. Sorry about that. He, it's okay. He was a uh, he was a big inspiration for me to stay. You know, just just chase, follow your dream, and and don't stop. And have the belief and the perseverance. So, yeah. you know, I, I come back here and I tell people I'm a filmmaker, and they don't really believe you. You know. Um, and so it's, you kind of have to prove it to them. And, I, and I'll say, I bet you've seen a movie of mine. And they go, what do you mean? And I, and I mentioned the Youngstown documentary. And I'm lucky that everybody here in Youngstown loved the documentary. They've all seen yeah. it. So they know my work. Um, you know, I, I, was, I was writing for Fox Sports. I was doing Fox College football and UFC and baseball. No. So they've seen a lot of the stuff I've written. They just didn't know it was me writing a lot of the content. Yeah. The, uh, these these television shows these sports shows um and so you know you, you got to convince people that you're a real filmmaker first that's the hardest part is convincing these folks that you're real and uh and then why they should why they should believe in you or invest in you and invest in this crazy film business uh the people around here don't really understand how the film business works i don't think people in los angeles understand how the film business works but uh you know my my goal was to make a small movie to prove that we could do it and you know get it distributed and build from there make another movie and a better movie and a bigger movie and 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 try to really do something in this community here that uh inspires people to show that they can do it because one of the big things for me when I was growing up here, Take I wanted care. I wanted to get out because I thought to myself, you had to get out. I really did. I thought, you know, you couldn't make a movie in Youngstown. You had to you had to be in New York or Los Angeles. Yeah. And at the time, I think it was, you know, it was obviously more true then than it was now. But, you know, now I'm trying to show that you can, you can do it here. And I'm fortunate that we just got uh, uh, our movie's called Worst Christmas Ever. I that's saw that. One, that's the one that we shot here uh, recently, and it has been distributed now. We got a distributor named uh, Gravitas Ventures, who has us on all these major platforms. And uh, you know, this little movie that spent, you know, nothing as far as Hollywood's concerned. We spent no money on this movie. And we got distribution that, you know, some big movie stars have. And uh, my little guy's playing with the mouse here. So come here, bro. Look, say hi. There you go. But, are you uh, getting a crew? Are you, uh, are you, um, is there like, is there like a little uh, community over there of filmmakers? Or are you kind of just like kind of showing people what to do and kind of like kind of doing everything yourself, but just having someone else's hands on it? <laughs> yeah. Well, there was not really a community here. Um, the first year that I was here, uh, it kind of fell on me to Whoa. to build that community. Um, there were there were some people who had interest, some people who were doing some short films and some experimental films, uh, but they didn't really have a, an, a, any experience or a you know any education in film, and so. Uh, I started the film society. I reached out to as many people as I could that I knew had any interest, found them on social media through word of mouth. And I invited all these people to uh, uh, a get together. This was in 2017. And 
I explained who I was, introduced myself and said, you know, we should, we should get together, and make movies. Let's, you know, we need to, to build a community uh, and a crew. And that's how, that's what we did. Honestly, um, we got a lot of, a lot of very passionate folks here and very green, you know, every, a lot of them, it was their first movie. Most of them, it was their first movie. Um, but we, we hired a, a director of photography from the other side of the state who had a lot of experience. And I would recommend that if you have a green crew, um, a real inexperienced crew, I would always recommend bringing in a, somebody with a lot of experience as your camera person, as your, as your director of photography, so that they can set the tone of, uh, of the, of the, of the crew and go from there. So we did it. And now we do have a community here. So when we go back to make another one, now everybody's got a movie under their belt. Now we can get better and we can, you know. Very nice. My, my question it. would be, how did you, these guys that, are, that you hired, are they working on, um, on spec? Are they, how do you pay them? Yeah. So our, our budget was not very big. I mentioned that. Uh, in fact, when I say not very big, I mean, it was, it was minuscule. It was, uh, um, you know, we had enough money to feed people and pay for some gas money for people. If they came from out of town, we had some people come in from different States to be actors. Um, and we paid our director of photography. Who was okay. Our, so how did, how did you, how did you generate the money? So yeah, first off, uh, started a GoFundMe account in the very oh. beginning, very beginning where we said, okay, we're going to make a, a feature film here in Youngstown, Ohio. We need all the help we can get. With a GoFundMe, we didn't really raise much. We raised eight hundred dollars. Holy crap! But I took the eight hundred dollars, <laughs> and we made a short trailer, a fake, a fake movie trailer, for yeah. this movie we were gonna do. Yeah. And sorry about that. So we made we made a, a a fake trailer for you know we really we spent I think you know, $500 in food and, and a couple hundred bucks, you know, to pay the camera guy for a day or, or a couple days. Oh, and we man. shot a little trailer and the trailer came out great. And it was with that trailer that we then joined a bigger crowdfunding campaign uh, on, a, on a website called seedandspark.com, which is like a Kickstarter, but strictly for movies. So we did this, uh, we took our fake trailer, we put it on this other crowdfunding source and we ended up raising $8,000. And we, we took that $8,000 and uh, you know, said, well, it's not what we needed, not what we thought we want to make the movie. We were, we were aiming a little higher, uh, but let's just get started. And we, we just plowed right into production and we raised more money along the way and just kept piecemealing it together. And uh, that's why it took us a little longer than usual to make a movie. I don't recommend starting without your budget in place. But, uh, but like I said, our, our passion kind of made up for the lack of, the lack of funds in the bank account. So we, yeah. uh, we just, that's how we did it. We got all the way through it. And, you know, I think, you know, uh, a, a friend of mine named Joe Vaglica. You met Joe. No. Joe was our saving grace. He came in at the very end. We were we were so close to production, finishing production, that we needed a little more money to finish. And along comes this guy from Florida, and he was acting in, in a project Thank in Ohio. You. Thank you. And he and he he friended us on Facebook, and uh, we got to talking. We, we said, okay, I'm a, I'm, I'm a Yankee fan. He's a Yankees fan. We, uh, we're both trying to make movies. He's Italian. I'm Italian. We just got talking on, you know, back and forth. And it came to a point where he said, what do you need to finish your movie? And I said, we're, we're in the last stage now where all we need is a couple, couple grand to finish this movie. And Joe came on and, you know, credit card filmmaker, you know, and helped us get to the end and finish line. And we did it. And it was, you know, th I thank him so much because he, uh, he came in out of nowhere and it helped us cross the finish line. So that was kind of how the movie was made. It's that kind of Yay! serendipity. That's right. That kind of uh, 
that kind of good luck we had on our side. So, so it sounds like about ten thousand dollars to make the movie. Uh, all in, we're about twenty three thousand. Oh. All twenty three thousand dollars doesn't sound like you'd go anywhere in the film business. I mean, yeah. I don't know, yeah. Charlie. Charlie, have you have you made a film? Uh, no, I only made short films, and it's always like a few hundred. Like you said, like the 800 to make a trailer, that's probably, yeah, like a short film. It's probably really? a little bit longer than trailer, and that's probably how much money, and you just make it work. Unless okay, you're so, in L.A. So, if you're, okay, if you're in L.A., good. it's a lot. Uh, everything costs way more. Yeah, I bet. Um, and that's the that's a benefit of, of shooting in Youngstown, Ohio. Your dollar goes a lot farther. Um, yeah. We get locations for free. Okay. Yeah. People are helping. People, want, people just want to help. They show up. They want to, they want to, uh, you know, you need a car for a movie. you got three people show up and say, Hey, use Hell. my car. Mm-hmm. That's, that's pretty cool. Absolutely. It's yeah. great. Thing. I know like, uh, I just, cause I follow politics quite a bit now. I didn't used to, but it now is very addicting, but, uh, I guess a lot of Hollywood is, they do a lot of shooting in Georgia. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, there's, been, there's, there's been so, talk about that. O- Ohio wants to shoot. Uh, they're getting a lot more production in Ohio as well. Pennsylvania, pretty big. Um, it's because of the film incentives, the tax incentives. Yeah. Have. And which states will compete and have better tax incentives? Um, Ohio is. I can. I can really only speak to Ohio because that's what I know. It's thirty percent. You get thirty percent uh, tax rebate if if you spend. A, a minimum of three hundred and thirty thousand dollars. So we we were so small we couldn't qualify for a tax break even if we wanted to, but we were so tiny that uh, you, you guys could just go out there. Go ahead, shut the door, Gio. Thanks. So yeah, it, it's Ohio's got a pretty good one. I don't think it's as good as Georgia. Georgia might be like forty percent, but uh, you know it's still pretty competitive compared to a lot of these other states. So you're right. They don't they they shoot. I'll give you a quick thing. They shot a movie in Cleveland called White Boy Rick with Matthew McConaughey. It's a true story from Detroit, but they shot it in Cleveland because they got a better deal <laughs> making a movie, you know. And and conversely, a couple of years before that, Michigan had some good tax incentives before Ohio did, and they shot a movie in Michigan called uh, Kill the Irishman. And that's set in Cleveland. So it's wherever they can get their best deals where yeah. they go shoot these movies. So when you're doing a true story like that and you shoot it somewhere other than where a lot of this stuff happened, is th- th- does that become based on true events instead of a true story? Is oh, yeah. I mean, every, anytime, any, anytime a Hollywood movie says based on a true story, you can you can – Rest assured that not much of it is real. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that, that lives up to, you know, Hollywood. Hollywood is not real. Not really. I'll never forget. I, I saw that movie. Uh, so Kill the Irishman is about uh, a, a mobster, some mobsters in Cleveland in the 1970s. And, of course, they, they're trying to kill this, this Irish gangster who's really uh, named, named Danny Green, who's very resilient. And the Italian, the Italians are trying to kill this Irish guy, and uh, and they can't do it. So what do they do? They call a guy from Youngstown to kill him. That's spoiler alert. That's what happened. But uh, <laughs> I know the guy who wrote the book, and he is now a, um, a chief of police in uh, a Cleveland suburb. He wrote this book to kill the Irishman, and I, I had known about it for a long time. I actually tried to get the rights to it, but didn't have the money for it when I was in L.A. And I followed it. And I knew they were making the movie, making the movie, making the movie. Finally, they made it. And I got invited to the premiere. And I'll never forget. I went there. Uh, they premiered it in Santa Monica. Watching, watching this, um, this movie. And at one point, the character who's supposed to be a Cleveland guy his whole life, he says, uh, hey, go to the fridge and get me a soda. And I kind of, I think out loud, I just, it was a, it was a, a reaction where I said, Nobody says soda in Cleveland. You know, they say pop. And uh, and that was one of those things you could tell they didn't shoot it in Cleveland, or else yeah. somebody would have somebody would have corrected them. Yeah. And little did I know, but uh, you know, my hubris, the uh, the the screenwriter was sitting right in front of me, and I didn't know that when I said that out loud. But uh, 
but yeah, it was it was interesting. It was um, if you shoot a movie, uh, you should that's supposed to be somewhere. I feel like it's on the writer and the crew and the and the and the director to get the authenticity, you know. So. Yeah.